Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. The Matabeleland soccer team in Zimbabwe is preparing for the World Cup. Not the FIFA World Cup taking place in Russia, but the other World Cup, the Kanifa World Cup. Conifa's World Cup is not a World Cup in its popular sense, but it is a World Cup for the sport and its impact, how it can change and transform communities that are usually neglected by the bigger picture that is happening in the sporting world. Conifa represents nations, states and peoples not recognized by FIFA. Matabeleland are one of the three African teams to beat the odds and qualify for the tournament in London, England, in June. Matabeleland is a region that has got people of different backgrounds, different religious beliefs and different tribes. But we are saying, let sport bring all those people together. This is a story about belonging and a celebration of identity. This is Inside Africa. Going to Konifa, traveling to a different country, different environment, it means a lot. I think going to Konifa, this has been a dream come true. It's a once-life opportunity, so we have to take it seriously. These soccer players will be representing the Matabililand region in southwestern Zimbabwe for the first time in the Konifa World Cup. The journey to get there has been anything but straightforward. What we're going to do to start with, I'm going to have five against five on this pitch. Coach Justin Whaley previously managed in Eastern Europe before coming over to work with the team as a volunteer ten months ago. When I first came here, I think there were two footballs, no bibs, and uh, I think there were about ten cones. Luckily now we've got plenty of balls because uh, some people have donated. OK, guys, come in, please. Bring all the balls in. We've no actual sponsors for the team as such. So we are effectively trying to crowdfund the entire um, monies needed. So if we talk about 23 players and uh, three, three coaching staff, 26 flights, uh, 26 visas for the guys, and then just running, running the club day to day on next to no money. If you start to add it up, we need probably $30,000. The team's shoestring budget meant playing qualification matches were also a challenge. With the limited resources, you can't go and play fellow Conifa members such as Zanzibar and Western Sahara. Uh, it just would cost tens of thousands of dollars every time to do that. They did play uh, Barotsi land over the border in Zambia, which involved 20-hour uh, chicken buses for the lads to go there and play and, and to win. And they also played um, a number of uh, first league and second league clubs in Zimbabwe. They managed to get into the, uh, the top two places for Africa and therefore qualify for London. We designed a warm-up shirt that we're going to be using. Even before a ball is kicked in the tournament, the team has already drummed up enough fans to sell replica shirts. It was very surprising because we thought that we're a small team who, who would care about buying uh, a replica shirt. In total, we have sold more than 150, and we have got a waiting list of about 80 people who want to buy these shirts. It's a touching story in terms of how people were very uh, quick to respond to the needs of the team. A lot of the support has come from the local community in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, where most of the players are from. 23-year-old Kolan Nikawan's dream of the Konifa World Cup is driven by personal tragedy. I lost my parents when I was three years old. The person who raised me is my aunt. My dream when I was growing up, I want to become a footballer like my father. He used to play for Zimbabwe Saints, and I'm excited because my father, by the time he was playing football, he used to travel 
And I tell myself that me too, I want to travel as my father. Colin's friend Tabiso also joined the team to have the opportunity of playing abroad. They told me that they are going for a World Cup in UK. So I trained them to prove myself. I want to be scouted because there are bigger teams there, like Chelsea. Maybe I think I will be the first person to travel there to UK. So I try my best to raise my community and my country, like, yeah. So when I come back, maybe I want to play for a national team, yeah. The team had one final hurdle to overcome to secure their passage to London, and former Liverpool and Zimbabwe international goalkeeper Bruce Grobelaar came to their aid. They asked me to help out because they, they had to get visas, and because I'm well in with the government, I helped them to get the visas. When they got over here, I'm just here as a goalkeeping coach and also a little bit of expertise for, for the coaching bench. This Kinefa World Cup it gives uh, an opportunity to teams that nobody even wants to listen uh, or hear about. Uh, this tournament is about making good friends in the game and football and seeing what football can do to bring uh, nations together. Two other African teams will join Matabeleland in London. Bawawa, representing a port town in southwestern Somalia, and Kabilia from northern Algeria. We believe that the world needs a slightly more flexible model of identity, and we feel like anyone should be allowed to play for what they feel represents them. Barawa, in a lot of ways, is the best example of what a Conifa member looks like. So you've got Barawa as a London-based diaspora FA, and they're working with their community here, and they're doing really positive things. But also, they do work back in their own homeland. So they do work in Barawa in Somalia, playing football and creating football leagues in an area that was actually controlled by al-Shabaab until relatively recently. Like the rest of the squad, Bawawa's team captain, Omar Sufi, is second-generation Barawani. For me, it's absolutely essential. You know, as a child, I used to be scared to tell people where I was from uh, because no one really knew Barawa. But now, you know, I feel a lot more proud to, to state I'm from Barawa. But, um, you know, when I was a child and no one really recognised us, it's, it's just, I'd just say Somalia, for example. But being able to really recognise the actual uh, place that we're, where I'm born exactly, then uh, it's completely different. We've got to go for it, OK? As the level goes up, you need to match it, yeah? It is a football tournament, but for us it's more than that. It's, it's to get our voice heard, it's to get our stories heard, it's to get our culture seen. It's a real challenge bringing them together in a short space of time. We've gone through 100 players, you know, so this is the final group that we can put together that will best represent in terms of one ability to knowing about the culture. Thinking of banking in Africa, think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world. With the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch. For easy, fast and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People. Technology. Service. Zenith Bank. In your best interest. Calling out around the world. Are you ready for a brand new beat? Summer's here and the time is right. For dancing in the street. It doesn't matter what you wear. Just as long as you are there. As teams from across the globe battle it out, we're on the ground here in Russia, capturing the spirit of the 2018 World Cup. From the drama and emotion on the fields to what the fans are experiencing off the pitch, we cover it all every day. The 
Kanifa World Cup is being played in London during the holy month of Ramadan. The local Bawawani community from Somalia has prepared a meal for the team to end their day's fast. The World Cup has come like in one way, in a bad way. One way is very, very bad because it's Ramadan, we're going to be fasting, but another way is the best time we're together as, as people, as, as a region, as, uh, as a nation. If you can break bread together, if you can share a plate together, wash your hands, pray together, it increases and builds the bond that much more, where the grandmamas there, the moms, the sisters, the cousins, and, um, and they've been our number one supporters. With their strong diaspora community in London, Bawawa has been given the title of tournament host. Our vision is to one day host the World Football Cup in Barawa itself. You know, Barawa not being safe at the moment. We put a date of 2030. For us to get the experience of organizing and hosting a, a world event, you know, an event that's bringing 16 different regional nations together to play a tournament in the home of football London, you know, it's incredible to be part of that committee. But bigger than that is the exposure that it, it creates. You know, people get to know about Barawa. People back home would aspire to play for this team so we could develop training programs for these young people. And it will better the region. And hence that 2013 vision might become a reality. The 16 non-FIFA teams taking part represent territories spread across the globe. From the Tuvalu Islands in the South Pacific, the Cascadia in North America. The Matabeleland soccer team from Zimbabwe will make history by playing their first international match. For us, this is a moment of pride, you know, this is one of the biggest things that's happened to us in many, many, many years. But the biggest thing that could happen would be for us to win the tournament. <laughs> The Wawa kick off the tournament against Sri Lankan side Tamil Elam. When I get onto the football pitch um, and I wear the Barawa top, it's just an unbelievable feeling for me. Um, I just give it my all, not just 100%, but I give it 150%. You know, just getting, having the whole team there together, having a team huddle before the game, it just, it just motivates me to keep going. <laughs> The Wawa's team camaraderie was on full display as they triumphed to a 4-0 victory. It was amazing. One, the community turned up. Bringing Ramadan, we were, it was going to be a challenge for them to all get down here. But they came in in numbers. But more importantly, the friends that we made today with our style of football and the goals that we scored and how expressive we are. So it was a great start and, you know, we're making Barawa proud and that's what we wanted to do. The other two African teams have brought the African spirit here, you know. Better Belliland have brought, you know, that Southern African hospitality, you know, dancing, singing, you know, they're a joy. Um, last night when we met them, we were having a lot of banter. We were like, African brothers will be supporting you. We'll be like, we'll be supporting you. And Kabili the same, you know, with a North African um, heritage and a culture and a Berber style of football, you know, and some great players have come from that region. This is the first time Kabilia from northeastern Algeria will be taking part in Kanifa's World Cup. Our players are all Kabilian, uh, but they were, came from every continent, from America, from Asia, from Africa, and in Europe. Uh, only today, the one who came in the second uh, part of the game, he just arrived today from Russia. There is players, we never saw them before. They came directly to the stadium. He took his taxi. I paid uh, 120 uh, pounds, uh, something like that, and he was in the stadium. So it's very difficult. I mean, yeah, we don't want to talk about sacrifices because we are doing it with... Uh, I mean heart, with uh, power, with motivation, it's just pleasure, so there is no sacrifices. Khalifa Dridaire has arrived from France to captain the side. I love all in Kabylia. I have uh, a nature, we have a mountain, you have a uh, sea, you have a forest, you have the food, the food of my mother. <laughs> Our participation is a success. We are here in the first to play football and in the second to put Kabylia in the maps of the world. 
El Hadi Bouquet was born and raised in Kabylia and hopes the region can participate in the FIFA World Cup one day. I think there is a difference between uh, the real World Cup in Russia and this Konifa World Cup, but they have similarities. In Russia, all the teams of the world are there, and here in Konifa, all the teams uh, which, which uh, demand the, the, uh, the, their independence are here, and uh, maybe when they get their independence, maybe participate in the real World Cup. For now, the Kabylian team can build on a goalless draw against an internationally experienced side, the United Koreans in Japan. Ideally, we would love to win. One day it will come, but it is the first match. So for now, we are showing ourselves, we're telling the world we exist. That's the main purpose just now. Bello Kanifa World Cup debutants, Matabeliland, went one better in their group match against Italian side Padania. We scored our first ever international goal. And when Konifa was talking to us, they were saying, most African teams come here because we understand on the issues of levels and resources. They failed to score, some get beaten 20 nil. to just come in and score one goal in the tournament. And the teams that were seeded within our group, uh, Padania is actually the European champion. The team have now set their sights on their first international win against the Pacific Islands Tuvalu. <laughs> Rallied on by their loyal supporters, the Matabeliland team and the match 3-1 victors. We've just beaten a country. It's not just a Connie for team, but we've actually beaten yeah, a country. Your mind goes back to being on that dirt field way back in October. And here we are with this, with this amazing crowd we've had today. And the boys playing such wonderful football. Wonderful football, yeah, all the way through the game. I mean, we could have, we could have scored a lot more. We could have put the game to bed. I think they purposely... Uh, did it like that. We even thought Bruce Grobola was going to come on a couple of times. Twice the goalkeeper went down, so you think, well, no, no, if he, get, if he doesn't get up, then you have to go on. Half of the team have not even been on a pitch like this. They don't have pitches out in Africa. Put two sticks out for a goal, and then that's how they play. This is half of our team. So for, for them to come over here and, and get a win, first win, it, it, it's great for these guys. And, and it, it showcases what they can be like. You can tell the morale within the team, everyone is happy, and this goes back to our history books. This history has been made for a side that is coming all the way from Zimbabwe. I think it's the first time for a Zimbabwean team coming here, getting a victory, and we dedicate this win to our fans who have shown the support all the way. As a country, we've been through a lot, and it brings us together. In the UK, back home, worldwide as well, wherever people are, they know they're watching us. It's bringing us together. Hopefully we can keep that spirit going. Who knows what we can be? Meta Baleland's historic win wasn't enough to see them progress beyond the group stage of the tournament. But the road continues for the tournament hosts. Thinking of banking in Africa, think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast, and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Do you guys excited back there? <laughs> Thank you.
this weekend. Go to cnn.com slash motorsport for highlights from the Austrian Grand Prix in association with DHL. It's the quarterfinals of the Kanifa World Cup in London, England between Bawawa and Northern Cyprus. The Bawawa soccer team are representing the southwestern region in Somalia in the tournament being dubbed the Other World Cup. They are the only African team to make it to this stage in the competition. Bawawa isn't really a recognized community. I mean, we're really small, so the fact that we made it to the quarterfinal and more people know of us now, I feel proud to be from Bawawa. Before we started this tournament, I don't think there were many people who knew where Barawa was or what Barawa was. You know, it's, it's football is just giving us the platform to be aware of where Barawa is and what's going on back home. It's a nervy start, and Barawa struggled to settle into the game. Let's get something, boys, let's get something. This is the team's fourth match in six days, and tired legs begin to show. Omar, have a break. Bawawa's captain is forced off through fatigue. The loyal Bawawani community is unable to rally the team to another victory, and Bawawa's participation in the tournament ends in a disappointing 8 0 defeat. Back home, they're saying, don't lose 8 0, and we ended up losing 8 0. You know, you know, once we get on the phone, we'll be like, you guys are drink stars, but it's been a great humbling experience, you know, and a lot of our players are young players, so they'll take a lot away from it. They'll be proud of their culture, proud of their heritage, raising a profile of our region. And we just want to take this opportunity and the euphoria, the, this good feel factor that we've created and hopefully going forward, you know, really raise the profile and eventually do more on the ground in Barawa. <laughs> The winner, Northern Cyprus, eventually progressed to the Kanifa World Cup finals against the Hungarian ethnic minority, Kabataya from Ukraine. The referee, Mark Klattenberg, has officiated some of the biggest soccer matches on the world stage. My uh, career, many highs, many Champions League, Euro finals. So to do this final today is just as important. It doesn't matter where you're from, political reasons or whatever, everybody should be able to do and achieve their goals, and many players tonight will achieve their goals. The match is decided on penalties, and it is the underdogs, Kabataya, that come out winners of the 2018 Kandifa World Cup. But true to the spirit of the tournament, all 16 teams come away with trophies and medals for taking part. The stars of the competition have been Matter Bailyland. I think they've, they've sort of brought this amazing energy uh, and life to the tournament. They're definitely the neutral's favourites. The fact that they've even managed to win games here has, has been fantastic. You know, with Bruce Grobelar coming out of retirement, Justin as the coach, I think they've just been such a great story from start to finish. And given that three days before the competition started, we weren't sure they were going to make it, even with visas, um, it's pretty special, really. Matter Bailyland and Kabilia were, you know, they came straight from, you know, back home and in, in our country continent of Africa. It was quite challenging for them playing in, in these kind of surfaces, but the atmosphere they bore, the togetherness, the support, the culture, the dancing, the singing, unbelievable. You know, we were, we were quite fortunate sharing changing room with Meta Bellaland, so everyone was having a good jolly time, and, um, and that's what you want. You want to bring that flavor, the African flavor, to this continent. It may seem a bit dull at times down here, so it definitely added flavor and color to the tournament. For many of these teams, this tournament has been a rare occasion to celebrate their identity with the world. The achievement of making it to London was a victory in itself. What we've seen is that people love to ask about identity and people love to talk about it. And actually, what's so lovely about this competition is it's given people the chance to understand and learn about cultures they didn't know about. So I've lost track of the number of times people have said, I didn't know where dot, dot, dot was on the map, but now I do. And they've done that through football. And I think there's something really sort of amazing about that.
When somebody has gained back their identity, that person gains back self-worth and dignity in the world. There was a lot of dancing and you could see that people were healing in some way, feeling in touch with their community. Some of these people came here in exile during the era of uh, the former president Robert Mugabe and they felt so in touch with their community when they saw us here representing them and they sang almost throughout the match. So this is some of the small ways that can change people's hearts and minds. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank.